Okay, welcome back. So today we're going to be talking about the ideas of measures of location and identifying outliers. So remember when we are describing some sort of quantitative or numerical distribution, the acronym we want to keep in mind here is SOX. Alright, so that stands for shape, outlier, center, spread. We talked about shape previously. We also saw that sometimes we can see outliers visually, right? but we can't always tell yes or no formally, is this an outlier or not? Okay, so we're going to look at today some ways of numerically identifying outliers. All right, and that's where measures of location come in. So a measure of location tells us where does a given observation stand in regards to the rest of the distribution. And we use these as the building blocks to quantify outliers. So the common ones that we're going to look at here are percentiles and quantiles. So the first measure of location that we're going to talk about here, something you probably heard of, a, a percentile. Okay, so notation-wise, sometimes percentiles may be written different ways. Sometimes it's, but the idea here is that we're dividing or we're segmenting up our distribution into a hundred little segments. Okay, and usually it's denoted like this, the first percentile, the second percentile, and so forth. Okay, so you've probably heard this word before, at least in the context of, say, like a standardized test or something, like, like the SAT. Right, if you got your SAT scores back and they told you you're in the 85th percentile, well, what does that mean? Right? That means you did better than 85% of people who took the test that year, right? but then 15% still did better than you. Okay? So it tells you where you stand in relation to the rest of the distribution. So mathematically, to find this, all we need to know is the number of observations total that we have in our list and where our observation stands. Right, so take the number less than your observation, divide by the total, usually multiply by 100 to get our percentile there. Right, so this is when I have an observation that I'm interested in, in that list of my distribution, and I want to see what is its percentile. On the other hand, sometimes we might want to know, well, where would I have to be to be to fall in a certain percentile, or call it the kth percentile. Okay. So there's a few, depending on the resource you're using, there's a few different kind of algorithms out there to do this. Right? But here's one, one that I think is pretty straightforward. So obviously we need to sort our data first, and then use what we would call a location function. So plug in the percentile you're interested in there, divide by 100, multiply by little n, how many you have there, how many observations you have. Right? And then you kind of run into some issues with um, rounding from time to time. Okay, So if it's a whole number, that's great. We start at the bottom and count up to the location. But if it's not a whole number, we always want to round our location up. Okay, so two ways we might work with, with percentiles there. I've got an observation I'm interested in, and I want to know its percentile, or I've got a percentile I'm interested in, and I want to find, okay, where do I have to be to be in the kth percentile? The next measure of location that we're going to talk about here are the quartiles. Kind of sounds like percentiles, and that, that prefix quartiles, right, that implies something about four, right? So they're really just special cases of percentiles that divides our data set up into four groups. All right, so Q1 is the 25th percentile, right, where 25% of the data is less than, 75% is more than. Q2 is the 50th percentile also known as something you may have heard of before, the median. And Q3 is our 75th percentile. Okay, so when we're trying to find quartiles, 
There's a couple ways we can go about finding them. We can just treat them like percentiles, because that's really what they are, just special cases of percentiles. Okay, or to find, so these are kind of special percentiles, especially the median. So there are special ways that we can do this that, that we may be familiar with here. Okay, so I want to talk about the median here a little bit. So there's a couple ways to think about the median. It is a measure of location, right? And it also tells us, hey, this is the halfway point of our data set, okay? So the way you may be familiar with finding the median is pretty simple, right? Just starting on the outside, starting at a maximum and minimum, and just counting into the middle, right? But remember, it kind of changes based on whether my data set is odd or even. Right? If it's odd, my median will be included in my data set. It's that exact middle value. If it's even, i got to find those two middle values and then take the average. Right? So we're going to just, just look at this quickly. I think this should be familiar to a lot of people. Um, if I have a data set here, n equal to 11, of course the first thing i got to do, put it in order, count from the outside to find my median. So 27, 5, 7, and 25 and so forth right to get to the middle and I find my median of 18 right a little different if it's even so n equal to 10 here similar numbers slightly different gotta put them in order same idea if I count down from the outside I find that I come to the middle but I got two values in the middle so what do we do just take the average 15 plus 18 over 2 gives me a median of 16.5. For smaller data sets, super simple. For larger data sets though, we're, we're going to need a tool that will kind of make this a little bit easier. And again, it's a location function. I call this one LM, or location of the median. Okay, so to know where my median is located, plug in n plus 1, divide by 2, and then count to that position. Now note again, this isn't a formula that we can just plug in, it pops out the median. It tells us where our median is located. Alright, so that's pretty straightforward. We bring that up because that's the first step in finding the quartiles. Okay, so once I've found my median, remember our median divides our data set into halves. Alright, so at that point, you could kind of think it's Q1 as similar to the median of the bottom half and Q3 as the median of the top half. Right, so here was our example with an odd number of observations. 18 was our median. Right, so now I have five observations below the median and five observations above. It's divided into two halves. So to find Q1 here, right, here's the bottom half in blue, the top half in black. I'm going to find my first quartile just think about the bottom half of your data and you can find the median there. So our first quartile is 10. It's pretty straightforward finding Q1. In this setup we pretty much just treat it like the median of the bottom half. Okay, now the only tricky part here is when I've, I've got this situation, I see the top half of my data, but now I gotta think about, okay, where, when I'm counting, what do I do with this median? Remember the median divides your data exactly in half. Okay, it doesn't actually belong with the bottom half or the top half. Okay, so when I'm counting to find Q3, I just ignore this median right, and I start counting here. So I cross off 20 and 27, work my way to the middle and find Q3 of 23. Okay, so that is really the only issue that we see when finding quartiles. Um, if n is odd, what do I do with the median? I don't include it when counting. Right? When n is even, we won't run into that problem. Okay, the other problem, now in this example, right, our median divided our data in half, and we had a lower half and an upper half, both of n equal to 5. Right, and that's an odd number, so we were easily able to find that median. The median is included in the data set. Another issue we might run into, though, is what if when I divide my data in half, the halves are even? 
Okay, so that would be for odd if n minus 1 over 2 is even. Right, and that minus 1 is because we're, we're taking the median out of there. It doesn't belong in the bottom half or the top half. For an even n, if n over 2 is also even, right, we're going to run into a situation like we'll see here. Right, so here's what I'm talking about. If our setup is like this, okay, so here we've got an even number of observations, right, and we this was our data set where we found our median right here in the middle, right, that was 16.5, okay. So it's divided our data set into two even halves here, right, so Q1 should fall somewhere in between these two numbers. Now there's a couple different ways you might see it done. There's just the quick, easy, and honestly probably not correct way of doing it. All right, that's just treating this like the median and saying, okay, seven plus ten divided by two leaves me with eight and a half, right in between those two numbers. And that's okay. You might see it done that way, but I think the preferred method, if we're going with the definition here that it is the twenty-fifth percentile, all right, what we really want to do here is think about it like this. Okay, well, the distance between these two numbers, here 7 and 10, is 3. All right, so it's the 25th percentile. So we really want to go 25% of that difference. All right, 25% of that difference of 3 is 0.75. So if I take 7 and I add 0.75 to it, all right, if I'm doing this, the precise way my, my quartile here really should be, or my 25th percentile, really should be 7.75. Okay, so we've got the median, we've got the quartiles. We're going to keep building off that to see our inner quartile range. All right, your IQR, once you found your quartiles, super simple to find. It's just Q3 minus Q1. So what is our IQR good for? Well, it's a, a measure of spread. Right? That does that only takes into account the middle 50% of your data, right? and it leads. It's a tool that leads to identifying outliers. Okay, building off that, it's our five number summary. So what's our five number summary? Just a simple way of displaying our data. It's your minimum Q1 median, Q3, and maximum. So why do we care about that? Well, we care about that because that's how we build our box plot. Okay, so we've been looking at all of this, just kind of building up to this idea of a box plot. Um, it's also sometimes called a box and whisker plot. You may have seen it in the past. Okay, so we draw a box that goes from Q1 to Q3. In other words, it represents your IQR. Then we put a line in that box that represents our median. Right? Then we draw lines, or sometimes called whiskers, to the minimum or maximum. Right? So essentially what your box plot is, is a visual representation of that five number summary. Box plot is nice because it can really help us identify outliers. All right? So most of the time, if we're drawing a box plot, we've identified outliers in our data set, we only extend that line to the next largest or next smallest observation. Okay, so how does this work? Here's Q1, here's Q3, draw a box, that represents my IQR, median somewhere there in the middle, locate my minimum, draw a line, locate my max, draw a line. Alright, so we said that line may not extend all the way to the maximum minimum if we have outliers. So how do we know for sure if something is an outlier? Well, that's where our fence rules come in. So when we're calculating, we're using this fence rule, we actually calculate two fences, your lower fence and your upper fence. To find my lower fence, I take Q1 and I subtract one and a half times my IQR. All right, so that's why we needed our quartiles and all that to get to this point. My upper fence, I go one and a half times that IQR above Q3. Okay, so if I identify anything that falls below my lower fence or above my upper, so we can say yes for sure, 
this observation is an outlier. All right, we know a little bit about outliers, and what do we do with it? So what is an outlier? We talked about it a little bit already, but whatever it is, and whatever the cause might be, right, whether it's um, some sort of error, or if it's just a generally interesting observation, right, we need to be able to identify them to investigate them further. All right, so we've got our measure of location, our percentiles, our quartiles, built on all of that in order to formally identify outliers using our fence rule. Okay, so thanks for tuning in, and we'll see you next time.